Do you know every natural number is a whole number and every whole number is an integer and every integer is a rational number and every rational number is a real number. Every irrational number is also a real number but irrational numbers and rational numbers are mutually exclusive. Further, every real number is a complex number, every imaginary number is a complex number as well but real numbers and imaginary numbers are also mutually exclusive. Awesome. So it means every number is actually is a complex number. So in this video, I'm not only going to explain what are these numbers, but also why do we need these numbers? So let's start with natural numbers. So let's make a story how natural numbers would have come into picture. Maybe someone said I need one chair, I need two chairs, I need three chairs. So this is quite natural that this could have been the case that people started counting things and that's how one two three four the numbers came into picture so what we can say is that one two three and so on up to infinity so these are the natural numbers let's now talk about whole numbers now consider this scenario we have three chocolates and two kids we want to give one chocolate to each kid so 3 minus 2 means one chocolate is still left. If we have three chocolates and we have three kids, then how many chocolates will be left? Zero. Now, the zero is not there in this list, which is natural numbers. So that's why we need a new list of whole numbers, which starts with 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on up to infinity. And you can see that every natural number is a whole number as well. Let's talk about integers now. So again, let's take the same examples. So we have three chocolates. We are going to give one chocolate to every kid and we have three kids as well. So the chocolates left are zero. But if we have three chocolates, but we have four kids, then definitely we are short of one chocolate. So that means minus one. So minus one is not part of any of this list. So that's why we need another list which is called integers. So this is how we can write it 0 plus 1 and minus 1 plus 2 and minus 2 and so on up to plus infinity and minus infinity. And now you can see that every whole number is also an integer as well. Let's now talk about rational numbers. Let's take this example. There are four chocolates and we have two kids so each kid will get two chocolates. If there are 10 chocolates, two kids, each will get five chocolates. But what about if there are five chocolates and two kids, then both will get 2.5 each. Now 2.5 is not an integers list. So this is a number which has a decimal portion as well, whereas in natural number, whole number integers, we don't have these kind of numbers. Now there is one more scenario. For example, say we have 10 chocolates and three kids. So in that case, we are supposed to divide 3.33333 and so on number of chocolates among the kids. I don't know how will you do that, but this is the number. Okay. This can also be written as say 3.3 and then we will put a bar on top of it, which means this decimal portion is repeating. We can also have decimal numbers like this, for example, 6.123233 and so on. Here 23 is repeating. We can also have 6.1234234. So any kind of pattern can be there. If a pattern is repeating, then such numbers can always be written in the form of P by Q where p is an integer, q is an integer and q is not equal to zero. So all such numbers which have either finite decimal part or infinite decimal part but repeating can be written in the form of p by q. All these numbers which can be written in the form of p by q where p and q are integers are known as rational numbers. Now we can also say that all integers are rational numbers. How? For example, 4, 4 can also be written as 4 by 1, minus 3, minus 3 can also be written as minus 3 by 1. So every integer is also a rational number. So we can write down that rational numbers are of the form P by Q, where Q is not equal to 0. And P and Q are integers. 
let's now talk about irrational numbers now consider a decimal number where we have the decimal portion like this 1 2 3 4 1 6 7 2 1 8 9 what I mean to say is that the decimal portion is infinite and is non-repeating such kind of numbers are called irrational number square root 2 square root 3 square root 5 pi these are the best examples of irrational numbers let's compare it with rational numbers so in rational numbers either we have the decimal portion as a finite portion or in case it is infinite then it is repeated as well but in case of irrational numbers the decimal portion is infinite and is non-repeating so we can imagine that there cannot be any number which can fall in both these categories either it will have a finite decimal portion in case it has infinite decimal portion then either it can be a repeating portion or non-repeating portion this means a rational number can never be an irrational number and an irrational number can never be a rational number so these are mutually exclusive now the combination of both these is known as real numbers let's now talk about imaginary numbers consider we have x square is equal to 4 this means x is equal to square root of 4 that means x is plus or minus 2 because because square of 2 is 4 and square of minus 2 is also 4 now imagine if we have to calculate the square root of minus 4 is this possible this means that square root of minus 4 should be equal to some number x that means minus 4 should be equal to x square that means there is a number x whose square is a negative number we don't have this possible in real numbers because there isn't a real number whose square is a negative number so that means this number should be an imaginary number so definitely we have a number which is called iota and its value is square root minus 1 let's talk about it square root of minus 4 can also be written as square root of 4 into minus 1 which should be written as square root of 4 into square root of minus 1 now minus 1 is iota this means now this is of the form a i where a is what it is a, a real number and i is what this is iota which is imaginary so this is what this is my imaginary number provided a is not 0 because if a is 0 then this will be 0 and 0 is a real number to reiterate it once again we said that iota is square root of minus 1 which means iota square is equal to minus 1 so this is the imaginary number iota is the imaginary number for which the square is always minus 1 let's now talk about complex numbers now every real number is a complex number and every imaginary number is also a complex number so what exactly a complex number is a complex number is a number which is of the form a plus iota b so a complex number has a real part and an imaginary part a is the real part and iota b is the imaginary part a is a real number b is also a real number so a plus iota b now what will happen if a is zero its value will be iota b which is purely imaginary and what if b is zero its value will be only a which is purely real so every real number and every imaginary number is actually a complex number so that's it from this video keep watching math mafia keep watching.